Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this very special award evening. For obvious reasons, we weren't able to hold it at the gallery this year. But on the positive side, it has meant that so many more of you were able to join us. So I'd like you now to settle back, charge your glasses and watch the following film, which provides a brief history of this important prize and a tantalising glimpse into the work of these four extraordinary nominees. The idea for a dedicated contemporary photography prize was born in 1996, a collaboration between the Photographers' Gallery and Citibank, a forward-thinking private bank with a contemporary photography collection. The aim was to champion an art form too often relegated to the sidelines of critical consideration, to celebrate rather than belittle the central role that photography plays in contemporary culture. The new prize was met with much support and appreciation from the photographic community, and its success with the public proved there was an appetite to see and learn more about photography. In 2005, Deutsche Börse Group, one of the world's leading financial investment organisations, took over the reins from Citibank. They too had amassed an impressive contemporary photography collection, and their involvement continued a partnership premised on a shared passion for and dedication to photography. Since 2015, the prize has been in collaboration with the Deutsche Börse Photography Foundation, set up to further show their commitment and support to the medium. The basic format of the prize, with one winner selected from a shortlist by an expert jury, has remained pretty much the same. But Deutsche Börse's input brought significant developments to its scope. Not only was the prize money fund increased to £30,000 for the winner and £3,000 for nominees, but its international reach was enhanced by expanding the criteria for nominations to include European as well as the UK projects. The variety of each year's shortlist, the ambitions and the scale of the projects selected and the sometimes controversial winners illustrate how generously the prize is able to accommodate change and variety. The prize is perhaps most remarkable, though, for the consistency of its ethos and vision, especially given the seismic technological developments of the last quarter century. It displays an ongoing ability to encompass what is possible within the universe that is photography. And so, to this year's nominees. Mohamed Bourissa. First thing I can say, it's, uh, it's about identity, uh, resilience, the mechanism of the society. Uh, I decided to make photography because it was for me a possibility to leave a trace of my generation. One aspect of this project, it was like a, a big project I made about unemployed people in Marseille. It's augmented the reality uh, because um, where you don't have a job, you, you are maybe more invisible. Um, all the time and try to create this, this environment where everyone trusts each other like uh, and be uh, completely confident. For sure I was preparing the image but I don't force the people to do the image I want. I was working on and with them all the time. People from the UK, if they have to get something from the show, I say like for sure it's about colonization for sure and related to that uh, you can see in my pictures there's a lot of people from the migration they came in france it's a lot of people from the suburb and you have this same phenomenon um, here in, in uh, britain for sure um, and yes uh, they can maybe help uh, to understand better the the situation or their own history Anton Kusters. What attracts me to photography as a medium is, is the difficulty of it. In all my naivete I went to Auschwitz, but the place when I arrived there uh, struck me so hard and I, I, I managed to make one image of the blue sky above. And then I thought, but there were more camps than one. And I saw a map with over a thousand dots and obviously the the artist in me then said, well, you have to visit every one of them. 
the medium itself is very fragile. And it is the medium of the Polaroid is a, is a metaphor for our collective memory, which is fading and changing and never can be grabbed and held over generations. So the message would be that you see this irreversibility of this work happening while you are visiting and you cannot do anything about it. Mark Neville. I think my practice is really grounded in this idea that photography should have a kind of social ambition. The way in which my images are delivered and packaged in photo books, which are normally self-published, um, is integral to their meaning. But more importantly than that is the audience, the relationship to the audience. And the act of delivering the book, the photo book, to a kind of target, usually non-art audience, I might add, is absolutely fundamental to the meaning of what it is that I make. Parade started the day that we voted as a country to leave the European Union. The origins of Brittany are British. And a place like Gangon, this small town, has tremendous sense of community, which is reinforced through different ways. And I spent three years basically documenting life there uh, and what, it, what community meant. Farmers have managed to develop a very personal, complex and intimate relationship with their animals, with their livestock. And I decided to find real, but also metaphorical ways of visually exploring that. Claire Strand. Over the last 20 years, I've been trying to push and see how far photography can stretch using other disciplines. Like many of the projects that I work on, the discrete channel with noise is an accumulation of lots of different research, ranging from the film Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where Mike TV discusses how a image can be transmitted right through to the current Cambridge Analytica scandal and data mining. I have this particular set of 36 images that I retrieved from a tabloid archive. For discrete channel with noise, I asked my husband to choose 10 of the images and I gave him a grid whereby he would then give a number, a tonal number between one and 10 into each picture element of the grid and then asked him to transmit that information via telephone. This was a process that George Aitkart wrote about in 1937, where he prophesied the best way of transmitting an image, obviously pre-internet days. The project also has personal connotations for us all, as we're all trying to communicate with each other on a daily basis, and with as much clarity as possible. And now, for the moment we've been waiting for, the winner of the 2020 Deutsche Börse Photography Foundation Prize is Mohamed Burisa. Hello, hi. Um, I'm still uh, shiver shivering. I would like to thank the prize team, the jury, and the other artists, and all the other people I work with in the last few years. It was a wonderful experience and I'm happy to won because it represents the accumulation of 20 years of work. Um, I'm happy by the recognition in the photography. My first thought goes back to Françoise Vogue who I met in 2011 and who accompanied me and helped me to make this exhibition happen in Arles. Thank you to her because without her, I would not to have won this prize. Photography is my medium of predilection. It is recognition of people I have photographed. One of the, one of the people I photographed in the series on, of Nous Sommes Al is one of my best friends. The photography award represents the trust that all the people have placed on me. And I want to say congratulations to the other art, to the other photographers and artists, Mark, Clara, Anton. We with one I exchange, and there was a lot of unsharing experience. 
thank you a lot. Thanks for the praise again. Hello and good evening, everybody. Congratulations, Mohammed, to this year's prize. We are so excited to award the Deutsche Börse Photography Foundation Prize 2020 to you. Not only is your work extremely relevant and topical, but also highly innovative and responsive in the use of the medium. The Deutsche Börse Photography Foundation Prize has always recognized um, the importance of photographers and photography to reflect, to understand, and to shape the world. And of course, I'd like to thank the artists who have made this amazing contribution to this year's award with their bodies of work. To my fellow jury members with whom we had a very intense and inspiring debate, not only about the this year's shortlist, but about the prize in general. And of course, Brad Rogers and her team of the Photographers Gallery for doing an amazing job for bringing the prize together this year and for the show they created at the Photographers Gallery. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Good night. Huge congratulations to Mohamed Burissa. His phenomenal exhibition, shown originally in Arles 2019, is a timely and potent exploration of the mechanics of power and the effects on disenfranchised communities and feels so very relevant now. I would also like to extend my congratulations to all the nominees from whom we feel we have learnt so much and whose work we have been honoured to show. I would like to thank all the team at the Photographers Gallery, most especially the curator Anna Denneman, for her curatorial sensitivity in making all these extraordinary bodies of work come to life. If by chance you haven't managed to see the show, please do come and see it before it ends on September the 20th. Finally, no one would have anticipated COVID-19 and the devastating impact it has had on the world. As we continue to come to terms with the many important issues and injustices it has amplified and exposed, the role of artists has never seemed more important. Their ability not only to challenge assumptions, but to propose actions to address them is evident in all of the shortlists this year. Individually and collectively, they remind us of the critical importance of artistic and creative freedom. We remain extremely grateful to them for their remarkable talent, their generosity, openness, and for sharing knowledge with us. Thank you once again for joining us this evening.